Hello, this is a short walkthrough how I have recorded the summer three sit demo and um, it took me quite a while to figure out how to configure all that stuff because the demo is uh, running on uh, three sits as I said and the third sit is using, is using quite an unusual sit address and uh, it is using the hex D440 and um, this is uh, an address which isn't available by hardware on uh, either the reloaded MK2 nor uh, the FPGA set. And um, so the reason why I have used the uh, reloaded MK2 board is it comes original with uh, two sockets for two sits. And um, if I want to run uh, three sits on a board, then I need um, an, an inversion where I can run two sits in one socket, for example and uh, this is where the FPGA sit comes in place and um, general from, from the audio routing uh, I have um, set up the FPGA sit to output uh, two channels so two mono channels or one stereo channel and um, the reloaded MK2 board is uh, just providing one mono channel actually it's just uh, outputting um, sit 2 and uh, in order to do so, I had to build a small kind of breakout adapter so that I'm able to route the audio from the FPGA set to either my stereo line or uh, through the board. And uh, so if I run the FPGA set in single sit mode, then I output the audio to the board and I have the second sit on the, the same audio socket as well, got a stereo signal then. But uh, for this special case, I was required to have three different channels. So I'm routing the SID2 to the normal audio output of the reloaded MK2 and the two channels from the FPGA SID to my self-built uh, stereo adapter. So in the final version, this will look a little bit different. So this is just uh, for testing purposes and uh, how I'm going to work with things. And uh, with this little switch on the side, I can uh, change the audio routing. And um, those uh, three lines are for the address lines for the second SID. And uh, actually for this um, demo, only one line is required. It's a yellow line. And this is normally uh, attached to the A5 of the CPU, uh, A5 pin, address uh, pin. But uh, since the demo is using this uh, strange um, D440 address, I had this to connect to uh, A6 and uh, finally it was working. But um, the next problem I was facing is that uh, the frame master I'm using to capture my video and audio, or at least to convert this to HDMI, let's say like this, is a uh, only capable of running two audio channels, which is well, the normal scenario. So uh, to bypass this problem, I have uh, connected the audio outs of the board and of the FPGA set to my Behringer XR18 mixer. And um, I'm using my laptop to control the mixer. And I had to set up uh, three channels and um, to have and, and had to route those three channels by doing a stereo mix back to the frame master and uh, from here it is captured with this other media live gamer portable that's uh, the, the old uh, the old device which is uh, completely fine for capturing c64 videos and um, the camera which is capturing all that mess on my desk is connected to this uh, Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, and uh, with this uh, Avermedia Recentral 4 software, I'm able to mix all those video signals. So we have this overline, and uh, I can mix the audio signals as well. And um, just to give you a brief uh, impression how it sounds when we mix this all together, let's have some audio from from the demo coming. Or it's actually quiet. Well, it looks like it died. <laughs> so let's have a short reset.
perhaps it was running too long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, actually, now the sound is back and uh, we can crank it up a little bit as well. So I've set uh, uh, the, the sits and the mixer in a way that uh, the audio channels are distributed over a stereo spectrum, so to say. And um, fortunately, the demo is using one sit for the drum and bass line and uh, two sits for the melody lines. And I did the mix in a way that the drums are centered and the melodies are slightly offset to create some kind of a stereo spectrum. And um, that's, that's the main reason why I have all those cables here on my desk because I had to go to the mixer and back from the mixer to the uh, frame meister and all that stuff. And um, usually for all the testing I'm doing, I'm, I'm using different video cables for example. Most of the time I'm using this S-Video connector, which is a, a standard option on the MK2 board. But most of my C64 boards are modded as well to have a S-Video output. But sometimes, especially when I do repairs or something like this, I have to use the standard video connector here. And uh, so it adds up a lot of cables, <laughs> actually. And as you can see, the demo is coming from the Ultimate 2 Plus, which runs quite fine on, on the board as well. And um, when you have uh, watched my Sam's journey video quite recently, you have seen that I'm using this um, Nunchuck 64 adapter to use this um, classic controllers from the Nintendo Entertainment Systems. And uh, that's, that's basically the whole setup of um, the demo recording. On um, the emulator using WISE, for example, it would be quite easy because this, uh, this emulator is rendering uh, the video and the audio just in one stream, but if you do this uh, on the real hardware, it's a little bit tricky. So anyway, so I hope this was kind of interesting, so thanks for watching and if you have any questions or something like this, feel free to comment and um, thank you very much, bye bye.